I'm oh, sorry, we've got to start recording. Okay, um, we're excited to welcome you to today's On Track FSA ID workshop. Um, this week, Iowa College Aid and ICANN are partnering together to provide virtual college going FSA ID workshops and informational sessions for students and their parents and families. You can learn more about the sessions taking place this week by clicking on the link in the chat. We'll put that in the chat right now. There's um, more events taking place um, the whole week. Let me put that in the chat quickly. And then, all right, there's the link there for more information about the sessions taking place. So before we get started today, I'll quickly go over some housekeeping items. So since we are in a Zoom meeting, um, you have the ability to unmute yourself or use the chat feature to ask questions throughout the workshop. We do ask that you hold your questions until the end of the, um, the demo. Um, we will be recording the demo portion of this workshop and we'll address questions at the end. Uh, we are not showcasing this workshop via YouTube Live, but we will upload the demo video to YouTube later, later on. We will be actively monitoring the chat to answer questions before the workshop ends. So please feel free throughout the session while um, he's going through the demonstration to just keep putting your questions in the chat. All the webinars this week are being recorded and registered attendees will receive a link to the recording by the end of the day. School counselors will also receive recording links to all sessions next week. If you do not receive recording links, please make sure to email Tamara if you have any questions about that. And I will also put Tamara's um, information in the chat box. Um, with that, I will hand it over to Levi and he is going to go ahead and walk you through the process of creating an FSA ID. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're excited you're here today with us, and we look forward to assisting you in creating your FSA ID. Um, first, before we get started with the process, I'm going to review a few good to know tips before you begin creating your FSA ID. After that, I will show a demo of uh, actually creating the FSA ID. And during that time, please feel free and encouraged to begin creating your own FSA ID and follow along with me. If you have any questions during the demo, please type those into the chat as we will be recording, um, as we will be also recording. Uh, we will answer the questions at the end of the demo. Um, our goal today is to really help each person in the workshop uh, create their FSA ID and answer their questions. However, in case we don't get to everyone's questions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Jamie, Australia, or myself, and I will share in the chat box our contact information. So some good to know tips for your FSA ID today. You need your FSA ID to begin your FAFSA, which doesn't open until October 1st. So you're definitely in the right place here to get started with the FAFSA when it opens. Your FSA ID serves as your unique ID signature for your FAFSA. This means that each person completing a FAFSA needs their own FSA ID. A parent needs a separate one from their child and the child needs a separate one from their uh, student, uh, sorry, from their, from their parents. Uh, you will need your social security or TIN number and your phone number or email address to set up your FSA ID today. The FSA ID creation includes verifying an email address, a phone number, or a phone number. We encourage you to do both when possible to help you with future logins when completing the FAFSA. When creating your FSA ID, you will now be offered information about selecting an ID authentication application app to download to your mo mobile phone. This is a new level of security for your account. And if possible to do this, we do encourage it as it will provide you with every option possible to log into your FAFSA once you begin that FAFSA. 
When you're creating your FSA ID, you will be presented with a one-time backup code. We strongly, strongly encourage you to write that down or take a screenshot. It will not be provided again, nor can you log back into the FSA ID to see the code. So as we go through, I'll really highlight that step. But once we see that uh, one-time backup code, we're going to want to write it down because we will, um, once we move forward, we will no longer be able to see that. So that backup code is, is designed to be a last resort for logging into the studentaid.gov website when all other methods are not available. And as we navigate through the process today, you're encouraged to write down, take screenshots, photos, or email, or email yourself your FSA ID and answers to your identity questions. This will help you keep track of how to access your FSA ID in times where you might forget it. So with those good to know tips shared with you, I'm gonna go ahead and share the link to the web page where we will get started today. And then I will join you on that web page and share my screen while walking us through the process. So the link I just shared in the chat is where I'm going to begin with you all today. And you should now be able to see my screen, which should look similar to where you navigate to with the link I shared in the chat. And I'll give everyone a moment here just to find that link and then join me on this page. So on this page, you will notice that they share some helpful information with you. Um, again, just as we mentioned earlier, they clarify here that whether you're a student, parent, or borrower, you will need to create your own account to complete the federal student aid task. Here's a list of what you will, uh, what you can use your account for once it's created. And then as we proceed here into creating the account, the information that you're going to need for that, your social security number, as well as your mobile phone number or email address. You want to make sure you have that as we begin. So at the bottom here, we're going to click this Get Started button. And that'll bring us to our first step. So you'll notice here the progress bar at the top is going to give us an indication of how we're doing moving towards creating an account. First step here we're going to enter our personal information. So for my first name today, although my real first name is Levi, I'm going to use our test account here. And today I'm going to be Val. And last one there. One thing I do want to point out is as we process through these steps, for each line that you enter information, there are these question marks here that are going to tell you a little bit more information about what that piece of information they're asking for is and any valid or invalid characters that would populate that area. So if you do have any questions, feel free to navigate those question marks. Although I didn't enter a middle initial here, we do encourage you to do this. It can be helpful to distinguish you from another individual that may share the same name. So if you if you can put your middle initial there, it's a good idea. And next, we will do the date of birth. and then your social security number.
once you've completed the information on this first step, go ahead and click continue. And it looks like I'm going to need to try some different information. So bear with me for a moment here. Okay, there we go. So now at the, after you click continue, you should see step two of seven at the top here. And this is where you're going to enter or create your account information. So you can go ahead and enter or select a username that you would like to use. Um, your username must be between six and 30 characters in length. You can use any combination of numbers and or upper lowercase letters. Important to note that you cannot use a username that has 10 numbers and no letters. So you're going to want to create a username here that you can remember, and mine's going to be very original today. I'm going to use new user 78. And as you see here, if you do select a username that has already been created, it will notify you. So I'm gonna try to see if it will. Right, there we go. And then you'll continue next with your email address. and then select your password. As you begin to select, as you been, begin to type in your password, you will notice that um, it does hide the characters. If you wanna see what those characters are to ensure that the first uh, password you enter is uh, matches with the confirmation password here, can be a good idea to click that show password. And once you have entered each of those, we can click continue at the bottom. And after you click continue, you should see here that we're on step three of seven, according to the progress bar. And here you're gonna enter your permanent address. Let me pull up my address here to use. We're going to be using our office address. And you will notice as you begin to type in the state, it will populate that state for you. So you can go ahead and select it there. And after you enter your permanent address, you'll next enter your mobile account information. as you can see here, they do strongly recommend that you set up your mobile phone for account access. This just allows you another option of signing into your account in case you do forget your FSA ID that you've created or your username that you've created. It's a good idea to do that. And 
And then if you would like to add an alternate phone number, you have the option to do so at the bottom of that screen. Today, I'm just gonna stick with the one phone number. So I'm gonna click continue here. On the next page, you should see that step four of seven at the top if you're following along with me this morning. And here you're gonna select your required communication methods. So this is gonna be um, the method by which you select to receive information from the US Department of Education, um, information that they are required to send you as far as communications and documents related to your student aid, such as student loan disclosures and interest statements. So you have two options with that. You have postal mail or by email. If you do have an email, we encourage you to use that option. It can be much quicker and you're gonna receive that information more efficiently. Um, if you do need to use postal mail, that is an option as well. And then here you can also opt into optional communications. So those are uh, communications related to grant programs, student loan forgiveness programs, income-based repayment plans, other information that might be helpful as you determine which uh, types of aid are going to be best for you or your student. Um, so it can be helpful to uh, receive those, those optional communications by email or text message. And then finally, at the bottom here of this step, you're gonna see a language preference. That's gonna determine which language you do receive those communications in. So you have two options there. You can do English or Spanish based on what your preference is. And let's click continue there. And if you're following along, you should see now that we are on step five of seven at the top here. And on this screen, you're going to create four challenge questions and fill in the answers to those questions. This is going to be a security method. It's going to help if you do get um, locked out of your account or if you forget your username or password. So this is going to be an area of information. It would be a good idea to take a screenshot of as we're working through these or write down the questions and answers for your personal records. So I'm gonna go ahead and populate my questions here. So I've selected four challenge questions and populated those answers. I'm going to click continue here and oh, looks like there's a problem. So if you see here, if I show the answer, I attempted to put in St. Mary's and the error message I got here says that I entered an invalid response. For more info, select the help icon. So if you do get an error like this, go ahead and select that help icon. And you're gonna see that your answer must be three to 50 characters in length and can only contain upper case letters, lowercase letters, numbers, or spaces. So if you look at the answer I attempted to use, you'll see that I, I um, tried to use characters such as a period or a apostrophe. So they want you to only use lowercase, uppercase letters, numbers, or spaces. So I'm gonna adjust that here, take away those characters to match what they are requesting, and let's see if that works. All right, so now it has allowed me to advance to step six. I'll go ahead and give 
everyone who's following along with me a moment to get to this step because I know sometimes those um, security questions can take some time to navigate through. Alrighty, so step six of seven at the top here. In this step, we're going to confirm and verify the information that we just entered. So if you, as you navigate down the page, you're going to see the personal information that you entered, your account information. This is a good opportunity here to write down this information for yourself if you haven't done it already. Next, we have our contact information, the communication preferences, as well as those challenge questions. If you do see that any of the information is incorrect, you can click edit on each of these little cards here, and you can revise that information to ensure that it's correct. So if you need to, correcting any information that you see on this page, go ahead and click that edit button and that'll take you to the location where you're allowed to do that. While that information does look good, you're gonna click I agree here. You can read those terms and conditions. Um, they are pretty standard with your online account creation terms and conditions. Since this is for federal student aid, if you would like access to that aid, Really, your only option is to select that here anyways. So I will click continue. And... So if yours is thinking like mine, we'll give it a moment. And I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen here and pull up some additional slides I have for you that are going to help us um, explore some of those final steps. So give me one moment here, please. And I will find those for us. So hopefully you have um, been able to follow along with me and create your account. So I'm going to pull my screen back up here and share with you um, what some of these final steps look like. So if you did get as far as I got and beyond, you should see the step 707 here at the top which is gonna give you that backup code that we discussed earlier. You're gonna to wanna to write that backup code down and store it in a safe place. To give emphasis to the importance of, of storing that code, they have uh, created an indicator here that you will need to check that confirms you have stored that code. So that is the step seven of seven. After you have created your account, um, and actually give me one second here. So I did overlook, um, if you did not see that code, um, I apologize. I got a little bit ahead of myself. So here is the page um, where I left off with you all. And so there are a few other pages that you may be seeing, and I'll go over those here. So the first page of that step seven of seven is that two-step verification that we discussed earlier. So there are three options here. You can choose to use verification with your cell phone, your email address, or the authenticator app. 
So you'll notice since each of those has not been verified, you will see a yellow caution um, indicator here that shows that's not verified. So if I go here to click and verify my mobile phone number, it's gonna pull up a screen that looks similar to this. Your phone number should match the one displayed on the screen. And then you should receive a, a mobile phone text message with a code. That secure code is going to be the code that you enter in this box to verify your mobile phone number. Once you've entered that and click OK, you will now see that this green indicator shows that this method has been verified. And so if we do the same thing with the email verification, again, it should show your email address here. You will receive an e you will receive a um, email to your inbox, and in that email, you should receive the secure code that you will enter here. Once you enter that code and click continue, again, you should see that that green verified indicator is now displayed. For the Authenticator app option, when you select the Authenticator app, you will be shown a QR code here. That's a, that's a QR that you can scan with your mobile phone, and it's going to give you a code that you can enter here as you click Continue. And that Authenticator app will allow you to uh, have an additional two-step verification process. So now on this page, you can see each method has been verified. So we're gonna click continue. And here's where I um, jumped ahead earlier, but if you're following along with me, you should now see this backup code. If you were a little confused earlier, um, I do apologize about that, um, but if you've been following uh, those those last steps, here's where you should see that backup code now. Once your account has been created, um, you can immediately use your account username and password to sign an original first time FAFSA form, since most of you are looking to complete FAFSA for next school year. That form actually will not open until October 1st, so you'll want to wait till that time to use your FSA ID anyways. Um, in addition, your info is going to be sent to the Social Security Administration for confirmation. This confirms that you are who you said you were with all that information. Um, since you are able to sign important documents with your FSA ID, it's important for the Social Security Administration to confirm um, your information. That review will take one to three days until your info is verified. You won't be able to take certain actions such as correcting your FAFSA form, submitting a FAFSA renewal, or signing forms such as income-driven repayment plan. If today was your first day creating your FSA ID, um, since the, the FAFSA doesn't open until October 1st, you've got plenty of time for that verification process to be completed. And once you are, uh, once they do verify your information, you should receive an email um, informing you of the Social Security Administration review. If you didn't provide an email when creating your account, you can check the status on your personal information page at studentaid.gov slash settings slash edit information personal information. If there is an issue, you can log into your account settings at the studentaid.gov backslash settings webpage. If your info was uh, if your info was correct, however, they did not um, confirm that info, you'll, uh, you'll need to contact the Social Security Administration. So you can find your social, your local social security information office at 
1213 or go to ssa.gov. So that is only if your information is not matched by the Social Security Administration. All right, where can you use your account username and password? So we're gonna focus primarily here on the studentaid.gov and fafsa.gov. So on studentaid.gov, you're gonna complete entrance counseling, financial awareness counseling, or exit counseling. It's gonna be where you can sign a master promissory note for any um, aid that you do get through uh, the federal program. And then on fafsa.gov, that's gonna be um, where you sign you, your or your child's FAFSA form. Again, just to reiterate that form for the, for the following year will not open up until October 1st. One helpful item to point out here is um, you will need to renew your FAFSA every year. And it is, um, after you do it the first time, you will have the option to pre-fill the data from the following year. So you will not have to complete the full um, every line by line. Each year you do it, you can repopulate fields based on information from last year. So that can be helpful to know. Now, what happens if you do forget your account username or password? Let's say you wrote it down today um, and it accidentally ended up in the trash. So have no fear. There are options for you um, to recover your username and password. So when you are on the login page, you're going to see below the user name information line, as well as the password line, two options for um, recovering that information. And I will walk through what that looks like for you here. So if you did forget your username, you're going to have three options. Each of those options that we verified earlier today will allow you to access that information. So you can have a secure code um, sent to your mobile phone. You can email us your secure code or answer challenge questions. As you navigate those options, you will be asked to verify your email address, date of birth, phone number, or social security number, depending on which item you choose to retrieve your username. Since we all just created our account today, I'm just going to breeze through these to show you what it might look like. Um, so if you selected the email option, they will email you a secure code. You'll enter that secure code on the web page where you're retrieving your username. If you selected the mobile phone option, you'll do the same thing. So you selected the mobile phone for retrieve your username. They send you a text message. You enter the secure code from the text message here and then click continue. Once you've correctly entered that uh, secure code, your username will be displayed there. In addition, you can also use your cell phone number or your email address if you um, included that information as we set up the account in place of the username as you log in. So there are three options there. If you selected the challenge question option, you'll see there it's going to prompt you to fill in your last name, social security number, and date of birth. And then it's going to show you your questions there that you'll need to answer correctly in order to retrieve your username. Similar process here for the password. So you're gonna first start with entering your ID, username, email, or mobile phone, and your date of birth. Instead of displaying your old password, it's actually gonna prompt you to create a new password. So you can have, um, you can access a secure code in the same three methods that we reviewed for the username. And then you will be prompted with a page that shows you um, the steps to create a new password. 
finally, in certain cases, you may find yourself locked out of your account. For example, if you entered the incorrect password too many times or incorrectly entered a secure code when trying to recover your password or username, you may be locked out of your account. Do not worry because they have a process for you there as well. Um, so if you've been locked out of your account, it's going to it's going to pull up the screen that tells you your FSA ID is locked and it's going to give you three methods for unlocking that. You will notice that those are similar to the methods that we went through for both the username and password and that similarity will continue as you um, proceed through that process. For example, here we selected the mobile phone option to unlock our account in the same way that we had a secure code sent to our mobile phone earlier. That will be done here. Once that code is entered, it will prompt you for an opportunity to create a new password again. Once that password is created, you'll see a announcement here at the top that your account has been unlocked and then you can proceed to sign in as you normally would. All right, so hopefully you've um, got your FAFSA or your FSA ID created now. Um, a couple things to be thinking about as you prepare for the FAFSA. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to open October 1st. Uh, information that you will need to fill out the FAFSA You'll need your social security number or your identifying registration number if you're not a U.S. citizen, your federal income tax returns, W-2s, and other records of money earned, bank statements, and records of investments if that's applicable to you, records of untaxed income, Oops. and an FSA ID, which you created today, to sign those documents electronically. So I will stop sharing my screen there. If you're following along with us and have any questions, um, you can feel free to unmute yourself or drop a question in the chat. Um, we'd love to know if you have created your FSA ID with us today. Um, or if you're having any, any challenges as you proceed through that process. So we'll just kind of hang out here for a little bit and be available if you need us.